Welcome back to the Cudlow Report with BP failing miserably to contain the Gulf oil leak. Is it time to consider putting the company under temporary government receivership as federal as former Labor Secretary Robert Rice suggests in a new column for Salon.com? Here now is CNBC contributor Robert Rice, author of Super Capitalism and Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Robert, among your reasons in the column here, BP is not telling the truth. What aren't they telling the truth about, Robert? And how will putting it under we'll government receivership s solve that problem? Yeah, uh, Steve, the problem is we don't know what the facts are, and it's very difficult for the government to get at the facts uh, because all the facts are under the control of BP right now. For example, Tony Hayward right now is saying that these large plumes that a lot of scientists say are forming under the surface of the water are actually not forming under the surface of the water. Uh, it's very difficult for government to tell. Government needs control of the company, at least temporarily, in terms of looking at the books, looking at the data the company has, making sure that the trade-offs that the company is making in terms of what's possible and what's not possible are actually accurate uh, and useful. The public has no confidence right now in terms of uh, in terms of BP. Robert, it's it's Trish here. It seems to me that something should have been done much earlier in the process. In other words, they should have somehow assembled a panel of experts that could have told them what the worst case scenario here was. Instead, they became victim and essentially at the mercy of BP. So now we're in the situation that we're in right now. Do you think that receivership at this point in time is the only thing that's going to fix that? Yeah, Trish, I, I would have said uh, not to go this far uh, if it were a month ago or two months ago. I mean, th this is a pretty drastic remedy, but at this point in time, now again, there's going to be a lot of finger pointing as to what should have been done, what the government should have known, what BP should have done, what BP should have told uh, the government. But let's just take the situation for what it is right now in terms of uh, cleaning up this mess as fast as possible. BP is telling us they can't do it until August. Now, look, I, I don't know about you, but it seems to me that if we have to wait till August. That is a very long time. The government should take over BP's, at least temporarily, BP's North American a subsidiary and try to do it faster. Dan, what do you think about this idea? Will put, putting the government formally in charge help solve any of these problems? Politicians and bureaucrats are about the least competent people in the world. It would be like getting rid of Arnold Schwarzenegger and bringing in Pee Wee Herman. British Petroleum is losing millions and millions of dollars probably every second and shareholders have lost more than 30 billion dollars of value i can assure you that nobody wants this fixed faster and correctly than the people at bp now should they get punished if they did something wrong of course and as my colleague jerry taylor said hold them completely liable for all damages but the notion that putting a bunch of politicians and bureaucrats in charge of the company is going to yeah, solve Dan, the problem Dan, preposterous why didn't they i mean why didn't they do something like top kill earlier i mean why did it take this long were they trying to salvage any little bit of oil they possibly could isn't that the risk we run here where they're concerned more potentially about saving profitability and, may, and maybe it's gone beyond that at this point but certainly early in the process Dan they didn't seem to have uh, the best interest of really capping this at heart as you would anticipate they should Oh, I'm not an oil expert, and you know, my knowledge on this is trivial, but I know one thing. The shareholders who own British Petroleum want this thing solved right away, and I can guarantee you the company, even if some of the PR flax for the company have been, have been spinning a little bit, the company itself wants this put to bed. They want to cap the, the well. They want to solve the problem, much more than the politicians. You put the politicians in there, and it's going to be politicized. What Robert, a surprise. Robert, it can seems I, like there are critics from the right and left arguing that to this point the Obama administration has not acquitted itself much better than BP has. You agree? Uh, well, look at I, again to this point. There's going to be a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot of finger pointing. I'm saying from this point onward, uh, I would rather trust uh, people in government who are responsible to the American public than BP, who's responsible to its shareholders. I mean, if it, it if it comes to cutting corners, if it comes to doing absolutely the minimum that is required, that's what a company will do because the shareholders don't necessarily want it to be a charitable institution. I mean, we set up government for the purpose of regulating and making sure the public interest is being is being followed. If this were Three Mile Island, if there were a, a, a private uh, uh, for-profit company that had a nuclear reactor and it was melting down, the government, there would be no, quite no question in anybody's mind. I mean, the government would take it over and would make sure that the public interest was being served. And this is the environmental equivalent of a nuclear disaster. Dan, I, w I wonder if you could take a step back from this and kind of taking off mm -hmm. of Robert Rice's argument. What is the long-term impact on the American psyche here? 
of letting corporations, of deregulation and the role of corporations in our society. Is it going to be a major setback here? Well, I don't know what sort of legislation we're going to see down the road. I don't and even I mean legislation, Dan. I mean mm -hmm. in just what the culture, what the society mm -hmm. thinks about big companies like this and their role in, the, in, in society here. I don't think there was any long-term effect of either Three Mile Island or Exxon Valdez or other uh, corporate problems in the past. Corporations aren't perfect. Of course they mess up, and that's why we have the tort system. That's why we have laws that punish wrongdoing, deliberate wrongdoing. Uh, so I don't know that this is going to cause any long-term effect unless the politicians step in with some overreaction like they did with Sarbanes-Oxley uh, earlier last decade when they drove business to Hong Kong and London because they didn't apply cost-benefit analysis. But Robert, is there a connection here between the financial crisis and this oil crisis here in terms yes, of the responsibility I, I'm, I'm of corporations? That, I'm, I think there is, Steve, in the sense that we've had three decades of deregulation uh, where the assumption was that the market knew best mm -hmm. and that market fundamentalists, if you excuse the expression, uh, people who believe that the market was always right, uh, were generally telling the truth. What the public is now yeah, but you know seeing what? I, and Robert, experiencing. The, the market didn't necessarily work when it came to the financial crisis. There were a lot of other factors and a lot no, of other um, people Trisha, to blame. Trisha, that's exactly, that's exactly my point. I mean, if you look at the financial meltdown, if you look at the meltdown of Massey Energy with regard to the mining disaster, you look at what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico, I think a lot of Americans are saying, now, wait a minute, uh, there's going to be a proper balance here between government and, and the market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let, let, let me jump in, though, because the worst environmental disasters in the world were in the Soviet Union and communist China. Uh, that's where you've had the biggest problem. The biggest oil spill we've ever had was the Mexican state-owned oil company back in, I think, 1979. Yeah, excellent okay. Excellent point. Nobody's, no, wait a minute. There, nobody's talking about communism here. Please. No, I, I mean, we're just I, talking I agree, about the right balance between regulation and the market. Government does the market. a worse Go, job yeah. than the private government, sector. Hey, government, government, government doesn't do it better, but the private sector has not acquitted itself very well. And it was certainly uh, Barney Frank and company that were encouraging a lot of those subprime loans way back when exactly. that got us into this problem. So it not necessarily not the solution here to everything. Thanks to Robert Reich and Dan Mitchell. We appreciate it, guys.